Let's just start this video with a huge, huge thank you to Stacey Fenton of Pro Race Engineering. Now I know you know this mate, because, well, I've already told you, but thanks very much mate. Really, really do appreciate it. And the reason is a big thank you to him is because the whole time I've owned these integrated engineering stroker pistons, I've had them out of the box, I've measured them, I've talked about them, you name it, I've went through them. I know these pistons inside out. The one thing that I didn't check was the piston rings. One snapped ring, two missing rings. <laughs> this actually wasn't snapped, it was kinked very badly, but it's a secondary compression ring, so it literally was about to snap, and it did as soon as I pulled it out of the packet. I'm absolutely, I bought these second hand by the way, I'm sure I've said before, but obviously it seems like someone has possibly tried to gap them, ready to fit in the past, because there was marks on some of the skirts where it looks like they've measured, and obviously it looks like they've played on with the rings, snapped them, and then just put them back in the box, and then sold them, to me, obviously. <laughs> but luckily for me, Stacey had some rings on the shelf, so he got them stripped straight out, and now I have some G Pro Seal 83mm stroker piston rings. That was a close one, wasn't it? I honestly thought that I would never get them. Buzzing, buzzing. There's actually a few things from this build came from Proris Engineering. The bearings, the ARP hardware, um, and now the piston rings obviously as well. So give them a shout if you need anything like that. I'm sure Stacey will do you a good deal. Tell them some crap YouTuber sent you. He'll, uh, he'll probably not care. Anyway, so today we're going to be gapping our piston rings. But before that, something far more important. Do you like the jumper? <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. You could have looked at the camera, though. And uh, cheers, Alex. Really appreciate it. I've heard Alex is a decimal tense mega fan, but still not as much of a fan as his father-in-law. So come on, Ed. Where's your jumper? In all seriousness, let's get on with the rings. So uh, I've got my ring grinder here. I've got it out of hibernation. Uh, that's what I generally use for the coarse cuts, so if there's lots of material to come off, I'll do it with a ring grinder. I've also got my uh, needle file set, which I use for doing really fine cuts and then the end, you know, deburring of the rings. Uh, feeler gauges to measure it. I've also got these four nails knocked in the board here, and that's just a little bit of admin so that when I do the rings, I can put them in the corresponding cylinder in order so that when I do assemble it, they're all sat there ready to go. So in the box you've got your top compression rings and they've got a little mark on which denotes the top. There they're like shiny chromoly type ones. Uh, you've got the secondary compression rings or the bottom compression rings and they're the cast ones. You see they're a bit darker. And you've got your oil control rings. I shouldn't need to touch them. So if you use the GE instructions to figure out what your ring gap is, I've went for the circle track drag option because this is going to be a track engine. And for my bore, it brings out a top compression ring of 0.45, uh, bottom compression ring a 0.47, but I'm going to push that to 0.5 based on my and other people's experience. And bottom oil control rings, I shouldn't have to touch them, but the minimum is 0 0.015 of an inch, which works out to be what, 0 0.37 or 8, something like that. I'm going to make sure that they're 0 0.4, so 0 0.45, 0 0.5 and 0.4, that's what I'm aiming for. So let's bash on. So pretty simple to do. I've already oiled the bores with some mineral oil just before I start. And the whole point of this is just get your rings into the bores, push them down, measure them. If the gap's too small, which I'd imagine it will be, get it onto the grinder, open it up a bit, clean it off with a needle file, back in, try it again. If it's not, again, 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 right up until the point where you get to that magic little gap that you're aiming for. Top rings for me, 0.45. And then we'll be done. I'll do the top compression rings. I'll put them all on the hooks. And then I'll do all the bottom compression rings on the hooks. And then the oil control rings. And then we'll be done. Simple as that. And now I can get my feeler gauge in that gap there. And I can determine what that ring gap is. Now I can tell straight away just by eye that that one's too small, but I've also measured it and it's at 0.2, so 
so I need to open this up to 0.45 so time to get onto the ring grinder I'll do the coarse cut with the ring grinder uh, and then I'll finish it off just with a needle file and that's just to make sure that it's nice and smooth on the end and it's deburred because if there's any burrs or high points they'll just score your ball so this thing has to be immaculate before it goes back into the ball to do the next measurement so we'll grind this off and we'll see uh, how we get on Spot on, 0.45 on my number one cylinder. Uh, that's exactly what I want to see. And you just get a tiny, tiny little bit of resistance on the uh, the blade, and then you know you're at the right size. Now, if you think you've gone a bit too far, you can also just try the, the, the feeler gauge. That's the next one up. So the next one up for me is a 0.48. And no, nah, it doesn't want to go in. Probably would if I really forced it, but then I'd be like, distorting the ring so 0.45 on that ring spot on that can now go on the wall uh, and then I'll do the other ones so here's the thing about ring gaps it's far better to have too much ring gap over too little because at the end of the day the ring needs room to expand and you can cause a load of damage by not having enough too much and if the rest of your rings are all right then chances are it'll probably not have that much of an adverse effect Plus, it's far more important that the ends of the ring gaps are completely parallel to each other and you don't have a wonky cut. No point in stopping the music. I've um, done the top compression rings, now I'm going to do the secondary compression rings, and, and this time I'm going to go for 0.5, like I said before. So, check, grind, check, grind, check, grind. You know the drill. So that's the secondary or bottom compression rings on the board now, so good to go, all four cylinders at 0.5. I just need to check the oil control rings now, I'm going to have them all at 0.4. If I do have to touch them, I would imagine it will only be the tiniest bit, I haven't had to do it in the past. Uh, but you do have to check them, because you know, they can't be too small. Which leads on to another good point, you know, a lot of people think that you get pre-gapped rings. Oh, I think you do to a certain degree, but you know, all rings, I think, have to be gapped manually they'll come very very close but they'll not be right it's just impossible to achieve that you know with the differences in the cylinder uh, wall all the rest of it so you know if you're thinking about should i just buy a certain brand because the see they're pre-gapped mm, they're only pre-gapped to a degree like they're not they're not perfect you still you should still do this uh, you'll notice that i'm also push the rings down with a brand new piston just keep it nice and square in the bow and push it down to the second or the third uh, ring landing I just do it by eye, by touch you know a lot of people have their square tools but I don't I wasn't taught that way I was taught by you know eye, touch, feel be at one with the engine kind of thing <laughs> anyway oil control rings As it goes, the oil control rings are all mint from factory, so all at 0.4, so I'm really happy with that. And that's the ring gaps all sorted, they're all on the board, ready to go. Uh, I just need to get the pistons and the rods assembled, uh, and then we'll get the rings onto them and get them in the engine. Ooh, it's starting to come together. So the next video, we'll get the pistons, the rods, the rings. Actually, no, we might do the crank. We'll put the crank in the next one, because we need to check all the clearances involved with the crank. Then we'll get the pistons, the rods, the rings. 
uh, and we'll get it all together. Next few videos, just subscribe. You know you want to. I mean, let's face it. Uh, big thanks out to Stacey Fenton. Really do appreciate it, mate. Proius Engineering, go check them out. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.